So you want to build a house. Welcome to the podcast by Statera Homes. I'm Scott Daly. And I'm Jackie Kowaleski. And we're so glad to be joining you on this episode. Jackie, what are we talking about this episode? We are talking about Statera. What about Statera? Uh, well, you were going to do the most of the talking, right? Maybe. Okay. Well, we're talking about Statera and how the company came about. Um, we're going to talk about sort of like our company values, the way we see things, and the way we work. Right. And here's why this matters. This, I think this matters mostly because um, y- we think you want to know, understand, and trust the person that's going to be building your house. And so if you don't want to listen to how Statera came to be because you're just listening to this podcast, so you don't really care about Statera, the takeaway is this, work with a builder you trust. Uh, if you think you might be looking in Delaware and you might be looking at Statera, then this is kind of a little about us so that you can understand and get to know what the company um, is all about, what its values are. And, and those are important things because you want to know that about a builder. You're, you're talking about building a new house. You're talking about a very expensive, complex transaction. A long relationship. And a very long relationship. So... Uh, that's what this podcast is about, and that's why we think it's important. And that doesn't mean everyone is going to think it's important. So if you're just going to say, oh, I don't want to learn about Satara, I'm turning off. Just know this. Trust the builder. Yeah, trust the builder. And then go to our next episode. It's fine. And go to our next episode. We won't we, force you to listen to anything. We will miss you dearly. Yeah. And you're probably making the worst mistake of your day. Oh, also, wait a week, because I need to publish another episode. <laughs> right. So assuming that you're still there... We're glad you're here. Yay, welcome. And you're going to love uh, this episode. So uh, so we're going to talk uh, a lot about Statera and how it came to be and what it's about and all that. And um, I guess I'm just going to launch right into it, right? Just Yeah, go for it. It so. starts with you, so go right. for it. So the company was founded four years ago, but it the roots of how we came to be uh, and I guess I should say the company was founded in 2015. Yes. Not four years ago. Appreciate that. The company was founded in 2015, and but the roots of it start uh, a lot further back. You know, the funny thing is when I was in college, they, they looked at us and they said, you know, you're going to go to college and you're going to major in something and then you're going to get a job that may or may not be in the field that you studied. But the chances are you're going to change careers like two or three times, complete career changes in your lifetime. And this was this new thing about this generation. And I just kind of like, blah, 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 blah. And so the funny thing is, is, well, I went to college to be an English teacher. Nice. And now I build houses. Uh, and there was a few stops in between. But the bottom line is, I was going to be, and I was, for the first uh, five years of my professional career, I was a high school English teacher, public school in Delaware and in Pennsylvania, uh, two schools, and had a great time. But what, what I learned as an English major as an English teacher is, is teaching the, the, the value of, of a story, of narrative, of individuals. Uh, I think literature is a very people-centered thing because it's centered around stories, and stories are typically centered around characters, and those characters are typically uh, people. And so it, got, it really drove home this idea of, uh, of story. And I think it relates to uh, the idea of home building because, you know, everybody's life, that's your story. Your life is your story and your house is the setting for the story of your life. Okay. And so in a lot of th- ways, I think that if our life is a story, which I think that it is, then it's really neat to be in the home building business. It's a huge transition from being an English teacher, but the exciting thing is, is that we get to kind of, uh, have, a a little role in the lives of other people because we're going to build a setting. And that is kind of a sacred uh, thing. That's a heavy obligation that we're kind of honored and humbled to be able to take is is people are going to come to us and they're going to say, look, we want you to construct the setting for the story of my life. And that's not what they're saying literally, but it is what they're saying figuratively because we're going to get to know a little about you as people. We're going to get to know a little about... uh, your your background, your history. Uh, truth be told, we're going to get to know a little about your financial life, and then we're going to construct the setting for your story. And that is that's a high calling in my world. It's really exciting, and it does fit in with the idea of story. So I love hearing people's stories, 
uh, understanding life and then being able to do something for them uh, that enhances their life. And this is a great place to do that. Okay, so you said you, you got into home building, but then what made you start your own home building company? Right, so um, I did get into home building, and, and what I found in the business is, um, is absolutely fascinating. I looked around, and I saw there was a disconnect between what builders build and what people want. And it absolutely blew my mind. If you're going to pay hundreds of thousands of dollars for a house, then you should be able to get exactly what you want. Mm-hmm. And so that was huge. Uh, another big thing is that a house, a new home is very expensive. And we live in this world where people are able to customize even inexpensive, very temporary things, um, like a cup of coffee. Right. And they can't customize a house. Right. And so I watched uh, early in my career the industry moving people away from having more choices to having fewer choices. So the product was getting more expensive and it was getting uh, less and less flexible in how it could be built around the lives of people. So um, that was uh, just kind of a shocking thing to me about the industry uh, in general. Uh, the third point was it was amazing to me how little people understood about the product. You know, you don't really think about a house most people in their lives don't build a lot of houses, but everybody lives in one, mm-hmm. you know, uh, in some form or fashion. So it's very interesting to me how little people understand uh, about the process. Well, that's all. So before I started working here, I thought of houses the same way I think of cars still. So I need. And how's that? Break that down for us, Jackie. Okay. I need a car. I go to car people. I need my car fix. I go to car fixing people. And I just drop it off or pick it up, and they tell me what I need done, and I just sort of trust them and act like I know what I'm talking about, but I don't. And that's kind of how I was with home building as well. I couldn't tell you anything about the ins and outs of home building, construction process, nothing. Right, and I think a lot of that, sadly, is intentional, and it kind of brings me to the fourth point, and that is the way that builders sell houses, it just doesn't make sense. And I think we're going to really dive into that in future podcasts. But in in very short terms, uh, you know, you, you have a product that you're selling that you never actually show to the customer. You show other things to the customer. You try to create emotions for the customer. They never actually get to see what they're buying until it's almost completed and they have to buy it. Right. And I just saw that that was... Um, it's a very interesting thing that doesn't make any sense. That how am I supposed to know what I'm getting, and how am I supposed to know if what I'm getting is any good? Do you think people don't want to know? I mean, do you think people? There are some people that just are saying we just need a space, and it just needs to work, and whatever. Or do you think people have been sort of pushed into thinking this is what I get? I have to sort of go with it. I think that people. There are some people that just they just want a space. You know, and that's the whole used home market. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't have any say in the construction unless you want to change it after you buy it. You walk through and you go, Mm -hmm. yeah, this works. Yeah, it doesn't work. Right. Okay. Um, So there are definitely uh, those people out there. But for the other people that say, you know, I want to create a space that fits my life and I want to create it. um, And that process is either scary, intimidating, or with a lot of builders, it's just impossible. Meaning you can't create a space. Right. You're not creating it. Like you're not saying, I want this room, this room, this room, this big, whatever. You're just saying, what what do you have? And then you kind of try and figure out what would work best, which is right. like the used home way right. of going about it, but it's just a new home. It's That's exactly. So okay. I'm buying somebody else's new house, which has warranties and maybe more up-to-date finishes, mm-hmm. but I'm really still buying somebody else's house. We think for $500,000, mm-hmm. um, you should be able to do some things to the house that are unique to you Mm -hmm. uh, and not go through a a lot of heartburn. It's so, okay, story. So we'll we'll just divert this. When I was a kid, I used to go to McDonald's. McDonald's was a treat. This was before everyone thought McDonald's was going to kill you or (laughs) we just didn't care. (laughs) Now you can't go to McDonald's or you like... Or you just had too many kids, so you had to go to McDonald's. Right. You just, you hate your kid if you'd send him to McDonald's. But we were excited. We had birthday (laughs) parties at McDonald's. So this is the 80s, right? So... You used to go there and you'd order your food and there would literally be racks of prepared things. So let's say you wanted a Big Mac because let's be honest, just about everyone in America every once in a while wants a Big Mac. Oh, yeah, I still want... I Actually, I went to McDonald's this morning. <laughs> I'm not kidding. See? I, 
and I don't go that you often. Know, as a mo- you I have betrayed your know, generation, Jackie. Ugh, whatever. Millennials don't go to McDonald's. I wanted a hash brown, and I got my. And hash you brown. got see that's it. So this is my point. If you'd have gone to McDonald's in the '80s, which is impossible for you. You would have found, when you wanted your hash brown, a rack of hash browns that were already done, a rack of uh, egg McMuffins, whatever they were serving for breakfast. It was mm-hmm. already done. And the only role for the, the clerk who was working at McDonald's was to walk back, grab that prepared food, and put it on the tray and give it to you. Uh-huh. Now, when you go to McDonald's, you can actually get cooked-to-order oh, yeah. stuff. And if you don't want pickles on your cheeseburger... You can say, hey, I'd like a cheeseburger and no pickles. And they will actually make the cheeseburger right then and there and will have what you want. When I was a kid, if you wanted no pickles on your cheeseburger, you bought your cheeseburger, you lifted the bun, you pulled the pickles off, and you put them on the tray. And that and that had no pickles. It was do-it-yourself no oh, pickles. I like that. So are you saying that a, maybe a more production-based builder gives you the sandwich and you got to peel the pickles off and make it work? Right. Or, or I'm saying, yeah, they give you the sandwich. And, but interestingly, McDonald's has evolved. So 30 years ago, you got you picked your own pickles off. Now it's made to order to your specification. And I'm mm-hmm. saying builders are actually, nationally speaking, going in the other direction. 30 years ago, you could pick what you want. And now you walk into a builder's, you want to make selections, they're like light, medium, dark. Mm, Here's okay. your color palette. Here's, they're trying to limit the choices. And again, we'll dive into that in a little more detail. But the interesting thing is I think our culture is going in the opposite direction. And that brings up the point, the way... Builders build and they sell. It just didn't make any sense to me. So um, went out 2015 and said, hey, we're going to, I'm going to do my own thing. I'm going to start Statera. And aside from having to have everyone, you know, pronounce the name like three or four times before they get it. Oh, yeah. Uh, everyone says, what does Statera mean? And uh, the reason is it is the Latin word for balance. Because I think building a new home is going to be a balance of a lot of things. And it is... A complicated process. It's an exciting process. Uh, it doesn't need to be a scary process. I think a lot of people would love to build new, but for whatever reason, they're just afraid of it, and they shouldn't be. And I think the idea of Statera, which being balance, is that we're going to balance your life, we're going to balance your budget, we're going to balance your wants, your needs, and, and, and put it all together into a mix that is uniquely yours. So, so we have floor plans on our website that you can pick, and you can buy them as is, but those can be changed. You can bring us plans, and we'll build your plans. We can tailor stuff around your life. And the funny thing is, is we're going to be able to ask some questions uh, that maybe you didn't know even needed asked. And we're going to walk mm-hmm. you through some processes and allow you to make some choices uh, so that this house really is going to be the perfect setting for your life, and it's going to be a balance of all those things. And so that was how Statera started, and that's really what we're we're trying to do, is we're trying to deliver to people the perfect setting for their story that is a balance of their budget, of the season in life that they are, of all of those things. Um, and it's it's really exciting. It's really exciting to to sit down with people who are hesitant about the process and educate them about the process because then they feel uh, a lot more confident in some of the decisions they're making. It's, it's fun to, to see people sit through and say, here's how I'm going to live, or here are the hobbies that I want to enjoy, or here are the special needs that my family has, and mm-hmm. to be able to accommodate those things and then to drive by and see these people around town because this is a small town and... Those are our neighbors. So beyond that, it's exciting to be uh, a part of a small company where, you know, we're growing and we get to work alongside other small businesses. And one of the great things about being in a locally based company is that the money, the economic activity, which is a better term for money that is generated uh, is is going to be locally spent. And it's that mm-hmm. we have a lot of decisions that we can make at this level on sourcing so that it can be done in a responsible way, in a way that respects the planet, in a way that continues to benefit the local community. Right. So that other local small businesses participate in the home building process with Statera, that benefits the local economy, that we're not sending this money to Wall Street or to shareholders or anything uh, like that. And we're, we try to avoid when we can using anything except uh, local small businesses. Now that has some downsides in terms of scheduling. We can't build your house in 60 days. Uh, right. We don't even want to. Well, that's a whole other podcast as well. Um, but we, 
are going to work with with local folks, which means you know it's also a product that when you're standing in it and it fits your life, you can also feel good about the fact that a lot of people benefited from the fact that this house got built and the environment was respected as this house was getting built. And, and so there's a lot of different factors. And again, that's all goes back into the idea of balance. And that's who we are as a company. That's why we think we're different is ultimately it's our core DNA and everything evolves out of that core DNA. So that's an important thing. Yeah. You know, what I think is funny. Um, I know we shifted it away from you, but you started off as a teacher and you're still in a way pushing education. I don't know if you realize that, but you are. Well, okay. Look at you. Does that mean I get to grade you on your performance in this podcast? Nope. I was just trying to give you a pat on the back. Well, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. I'll take the win, Jackie. Yeah. Do you have anything else you want to say about Statera? I think that gives you a, enough of, a, of an overview to understand mm-hmm. who we are and, and what we're about. And for us, this is, it's a passion uh, it's something that continue evolves, and um, you know. Again, you go back to those ideas that you should be able to get the house you want for what you're paying for one of for a new home. Uh, you should really understand what you're buying, um, and that I think a lot of the ways builders are marketing their homes to customers doesn't make a lot of sense. So right, and that's another podcast, and that's a whole other pod. That might right. be more than one podcast. Yeah, that. You're right. You're correct. It is. Oh, see, Jackie knows. And Jackie sets us all straight. So, yeah. so listen, thanks for joining us. This is the So You Want to Build a House podcast. I'm Scott Daly. And I'm Jackie Kowaleski. Have a great day. So You Want to Build a House is brought to you by Statera Homes. Statera Homes is a craft home builder in Southern Delaware. This builder finds value in working with you to build a home that is the perfect fit for your lifestyle. Statera truly sets themselves apart from other builders in the area. To find out more, visit their website, www.staterahomes.com. That's S-T-A-T-E-R-A-H-O-M-E-S.com. Or call their model home at area code 302-329-8881. That's 302-329-8881. Music from this podcast was by the band Defining Parallel from their recent single, Painted Lives. Thank you for listening to So You Want to Build a House. To stay updated on the most recent episodes, subscribe to this podcast on iTunes or Spotify or wherever you found it to begin with, or... Check out Statera Homes' website, which is again www.staterahomes.com. Thank you very much.